Hello, it's me. I probably won't ever show up on camera, but who knows. Um, these are the colors that I'm going to use to do uh, the tree painting that I plan on doing tonight. Um, I just happen to be painting a tree for one of the nurses in my doctor's office. Um, the doctor's already got one, and I figured, you know, she really loves purple, so... The background colors, you always want to use white, so I have titanium white, doesn't matter what brand. I'm also using yellow deep, orange, yellow medium, and then that's the background colors. And then the very background color is white. You always want to use white because that's the lightest you can go. And then for the leaves on the tree, I'm going to use, wow, that glare is really right in the middle of that, neon pink, pink neon, uh, rouge, R-O-U-G-E, in case you want to get the exact same colors, and that's Master's Touch, R-O-U-G-E. This is metallic purple, it's a little bit darker, and that's Artist Loft, and then the last one is Violet, and that's Master's Touch. Um, it doesn't really matter what brand you use, I mean, I guess if you were trying to be Picasso it would, but not if you're just painting to paint. Um, and the paint brushes, I always use a flat. Um, I don't even know what size. I think it's like a one inch. But I'm not even sure because I wore it off. Um, it's a flat and I use two liner. Uh, a round and a liner. I use, they're really, really, that's for the branches on the trees. Really tiny. This one's a little bit thicker. Um, you just, you don't have to be particular. Just some round and liner brushes. And a flat brush. Most of the painting is done with a natural sea sponge. That seems weird, but that's what I use. And then my palette is just tin foil, taped to my counter, and then I take a paper towel and wet it and put it down. And then the space in front of that, I can mix water in or mix my colors. So that's that's what I got for that. And then take you to my palette, which is my, it's a black canvas. Um, I'm really into using black canvases right now. So there you go. That's it's just your typical black canvas and my German Shepherd. <laughs> um, this one is an 11 by 14. You can use any size you want. You can make it really big or really small. Alright, um, I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back and show you how to start. I'll be right back. Okay, um, down here I have my three, my yellow, my orange, and my white. And then I have a spray bottle. You, I forgot to add that you always want to keep a spray bottle with acrylic so that you can keep everything kind of moist. Um, it, you don't need a lot of water, but you're always going to need some. And then in my sink, I have where I drop my brushes when I need to rinse a brush or keep it from drying out. Um, Acrylics do dry really fast, but that's why I like it because it doesn't take long. It only takes me about an hour to do a painting, and I'll be pausing a lot so that I don't take a whole hour. Um, I've got my colors out, so I'm going to see if I can grab them. So that you can see. All right, so what I'm going to do is you want to go with your lightest color first. <clears throat> so my lightest color is the white. And you dip your sponge into the white and then smush it onto the paper or a tin foil. Or your, if you have like a, a palette, you can use your palette. But I get 
you know, just enough on there. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. And Daryl Crow says you can't paint without paint. And he's right. So don't be stingy. Get that white on there. And here's your black canvas. So what you're going to do is start in the center or where you want the light to be the brightest. And I think I'm going to do mine up here a little bit more. And you just want to pounce. Pounce, pounce, pounce. There you go. And you can kind of go off to the sides like this. You know, blend it in a little bit, twist it. And we'll just give it a little bit of... You know, that black really... Um, it takes care of, it, of the, all the shadows for you. You don't have to paint in shadows if you have a black canvas, which is why I like to use black canvas. So you put your colors in. I want to leave the bottom mostly just black. And I'll explain that when I get closer to that part of it. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to grab a little bit more white. Smush it and be paint to paint. Do more right here in this center part. And then I'll do a little bit. Always too, if you're doing stretch canvas, go to the sides and the tops. You know, you, if you're going to hanging on your wall you're going to be able to see those sides and stuff so you don't have to be perfect just smash it on there here and there all right um i just spin my sponge to a different spot and go to the, the next color which is going to be this the, this yellow right here not the orange squish it orange yellow and Okay, we got some yellow going on there. Okay, now you want to kind of get around the white. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. And the reason I'm using yellow is because the tree is going to be purple and you want to use contrasting colors. Now the color wheel, purple and yellow complement each other. So that's why I'm using yellow as my background because the tree is going to be purple. So, there we go. Got some yellow. Like that. Get in there. You can always add more white, so don't be afraid to cover it up. You know, you can't be afraid to paint, or you can't paint. You mm know? -hmm. You can actually even add more of the yellow and the orange down at the bottom. I'm going to grab some more of that yellow, smush it, get it on there, I want it to be nice and bright. And then lastly, spin your, I'm not going to miss, spin your sponge around again, and dip it in the darkest color. And don't be afraid to grab that paint. Pounce it out. Alright. And again. Just here and there. Alright. Now, that's kind of a cool background. I mean, it's, you know, abstract, I guess. Uh, I like to go back in with more white. And I'll probably voice this over if it sounds horrible. Do some of that orange, that dark orange in the bottom, as well as the yellow. So get that down here. And I want to leave some black down there because I'm going to make this one shed some leaves like the end of spring going into summer. Okay, now I'm going to pause and rinse my sponge. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white over the top, just so that I tone down a little bit of that brightness. Back over on top of everything. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. You can, but you don't have to. A little bit more white. I like to move the sponge around, too, because by moving the sponge around, you get 
a little bit of different texture, you know, not the same spot on the sponge. Okay, so I toned it down a little bit. And I think, I don't know, that yellow is pretty, it almost looks green. So I'm going to see if I can't grab a little bit of a Okay, yellow. now this is the deep yellow. I'm going to go over, that's what we needed. See, that doesn't look green. The other yellow kind of looked green. Uh, it was just a yellow. This is like a deep yellow, and it's much better for what I wanted. And, you know, the, you need the yellow so you can contrast your colors. You know, like if I'm doing purple, I need that yellow. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit too heavy-handed, and I'm losing some of my shadow, so I'm going to stop there. And now you do need to wait for the canvas to dry, which doesn't take long at all. All right, we're going to wait. Okay, it's all dry, and I am going to take, I've got black paint, and it's just a flat black De La Rowney, I don't know if I said that right, but it's just a flat black paint, and you just start at the bottom, Let's see if I pull this back far enough, and you just kind of go up, how I, it just crooked, like a tree would be. Make sure you fill it in good. I'm going to get some more black paint. I really need to invest in a stand or something to hold paint right on my, on my uh, tripod. Or, I mean, uh, whatever. I got some timers. So you just kind of crook it out your tree and you know, branches are never straight. You can twist your your brush and make it look kind of, you know, think of veins. I, I took my heart, a picture of my heart, and I turned it upside down, and it looked like a tree. You know, um, I used the flat to get the biggest thickest part of the tree in. At the bottom you want to make sure that you get the trunk wide enough. So kind of spread it out and pull it up. And then when you get the main parts, let's see, maybe we'll go off one more way like this. starting to look pretty good. It's just a matter of laying in the fat parts. And you got to make sure you taper off. Forgive me for not talking, but I was just trying, it takes concentration. Might just have to voice over this, but, you know, I just, I really want to share what I do with as many people that want to learn how to do it. Okay, so I got the main part down. No, it's a little bit thick on that side, so let's make this a little bit thicker here. Make the trunk a little bit wider. All right, yeah, right here. Make it a little bit wider. You know, you can't ever go wrong with a tree. It's just, like I said, like a bunch of veins. And if all else fails, paint over your canvas and start over. No big deal. It's just a canvas. You can have ten layers of paint on it. Don't be afraid to try. 
That's what I say. That's what I used to do. I used to be afraid to try. Um, okay, I'm going to throw that in my jar and I'm going to grab my round. And I'm going to keep making, get it wet a little bit. Um, you can take your paint and thin it down a little bit because you want to make skinnier branches. So I'm just spraying some water down on my palette with some water. And mixing in some black to make it thinned out because you want it. Ooh, that is really runny. You want it to be runny enough to make your veins, your branches. Um, it doesn't matter if they're real thin at first because you can thicken them back out. The most important thing is that you um, get them laid out. Then you can always go over them. And never go too straight. Wiggle it around. Get it crookedy. Jaggedy. That's the way branches are. Like I said, you mess up, you can always start over. Um, and you can keep going and laying in more, but you have to know when enough is enough, I guess. Let's see how that's coming. I wish I had a tripod where I could put my camera and still get a good shot. I have to figure out a way to set up this new tripod. I was just going to sit at the table and do this, but I don't have a stand for my painting that's a tabletop. Easel. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. I don't have a tabletop easel. I just have this big one. Look at that. That's coming along awesome. And you don't have to add too many branches if you don't feel like it. Just enough. To make your tree spread out. Look. Starting to look really like a tree, like a crookedy old tree. I like crooked trees. I don't like straight trees. I don't like thick, wide trees. I like thinner trees, and I like them to be really crooked. And I don't know why. I guess because it is more like your heart, you know. It makes it more. Um, I don't know. Gives it more character. That's the word I'm looking for. Go off the edge of the canvas too, if you can. See how that looks? And then sometimes I'll drop in the round brush now into my water and then get out my liner brush. This is the one that's really, really thin because now I want some really thin branches in there and you can't get those unless you have a really tiny skinny <coughs> brush that you can look at that look how skinny those are that's starting to look a lot more like a tree now isn't it Your branches. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. And you can put as many branches as you want. You can't, I don't think you can really have too many. Just don't put them too 
common. Like, you can't make it look like a fork. You have to, like, spread it out like your veins are. Kind of, like, pick a spot and kind of trickle off of it and make it wiggle. Like that. And then you have to have some branches off of that one. So we can do, like, make it wiggle off a little bit this way. Fill that one in a little bit better. Go down. There we go. There we go. That's starting to look good. You see how that's starting to look like a tree? Well, actually, it don't look like a tree. It is a tree already. We're going to make a branch off of here. Make another one on the bottom. Got to balance it out. That's the biggest thing. Try to balance it out. There's, this needs a branch right here. Wouldn't hurt. You know, sometimes on my canvases, if you want it to look like an oil painting and you don't want to go into the oils, you can put a molding paste, spread it over your canvas and let it dry and it'll look like, it'll kind of look like you did an oil painting. Starting to look better and better, isn't it? I don't know. They don't have to be perfect. Just you. Okay, now, that's probably good enough because I'm going to fill it in with leaves in a minute. Well, when it dries. But yeah, this is probably good enough. You don't have to go crazy, but you have to have some branches in there. And you can add more little wiggly ones wherever you want. Just make sure they're not too thick. But that is the tree so far. All right, it's 12 minutes, another video.